Hi, I'm Jamie Delane Watson from jamiedelanewatson.com. Not every photographer can define their ideal client, but I bet most of you can define what your non-ideal client is. We all have those stories when we were getting started. Brides that didn't seem to trust or understand what we did. Emails where people would ask, make sure to get a shot of me coming down the aisle. Yep, we will. <laughs> or when you're out on a portrait shoot, um, the couple suddenly explaining they only want to take three minutes for their wedding day portraits. Or one of my favorites, thankfully this has never happened to me, <laughs> photos where you're both behind a tree just peeking out to the side. <laughs> this is a great example of clients who don't understand what you do and perhaps might not be the best fit for you. So we're going to get into a bit of that today. Thanks for being here. So ultimately, a non-ideal client is somebody who doesn't understand the work you produce, want the work you produce, or want to pay what you're charging for the work that you're producing. So how can we start to market to our ideal clients? Well, first we have to understand who our ideal clients are. And I think the best way to start is to write a massive list of answers to the following questions. So we need to know how old our ideal clients are, where they live, do they live in the city, the country, the suburbs, what do they do for work, how much money do they make per year, what are some of their interests, their hobbies, how do they spend their spare time. So I want you to brainstorm the biggest list you can imagine with answers to all of these questions. But if you get stuck along the way, think about five of your favorite wedding clients or family clients if you're not a wedding photographer. So what did you love about working with these clients? What did you love about their weddings? What did you love about these clients' personalities? Think through the things that they expressed that they wanted when they first came and hired you. What did they love about your work? These are, this is how you're gonna to start to build this bit of ideal client profile, and this will help you market to those clients in the future. If you'd like some help with this, you're gonna to wanna to download my Ideal Client Workbook. You can grab that at jamiedelinewatson.com slash ideal client, and they'll provide you with a list of questions and also a fill in the blank exercise that will start to get these creative juices flowing and help guide you to your answers because they're gonna be unique for your business. So now that we know our ideal client, we wanna put this in a bit of a story form. So what I mean by this is instead of just a whole bunch of bullet points, which is a start but doesn't really help us, we're gonna to start to develop a story about this character, a story about this ideal client. Now I wanna to read to you two examples, one from Anthropology and one from Kate Spade that I absolutely love. So first from Anthropology. It says, the Anthropology customer is affluent but not materialistic. She's focused on building a nest but hankers for exotic travel. She can picture herself roughing it with a backpack and URL pass as long as there is a massage and room service at the end of the trek. She'd like to be a domestic goddess, but has no problem cutting corners. She prefers the luscious excess of British cooking sensation Nigella Lawson to the measured perfection of Martha Stewart. She's in tune with trends, but she's a confident individualist when it comes to style. She lives in the suburbs, but would never consider herself a suburbanite. I love all the detail included in that ideal client profile. I'm gonna read one more from Kate Spade. She is quick and curious and playful and strong. She's a voracious reader and a fantastic dancer. She saves old snapshots and always loses her umbrella. Her emails pile up, but she never forgets to call her grandmother. She has $7 and change at the bottom of her handbag. Just unique, quirky details that help create a bigger picture of who these brands are marketing to. And we can do the same. So in every marketing decision we make, from writing our website homepage to responding to a wedding inquiry, writing a social media post, we're gonna picture this ideal client in our minds. And by including details and by addressing her fears and what she most hopes for out of her wedding photography experience, we're gonna be speaking right to our ideal client or repelling if they're a non-ideal client. We don't need to work with everyone. So this way it's gonna make our marketing more personable and also more effective. So who wouldn't want that? So as a reminder, grab that freebie at jamiedelanewatson.com slash ideal client that'll help you out so much i'm really excited about that thank you for being here please like subscribe and comment on this video and stay tuned for next week because this video is going to lead naturally into that one we're going to be talking about how to choose images for your website galleries and how to conduct an audit of your website galleries to see if they're really working for you so thanks for being here have a great week